on behalf of the Board of Trustees, and the faculty, and the staff of Covenant College, welcome to the 57th Annual Commencement Exercises. We are here by God's grace and for His glory to give Him thanks for His goodness and provision over these last years for our graduates and to look forward with anticipation to His purposes for them. I hope you'll permit me just a few moments of personal privilege. We are here because we love Covenant College. We love Covenant College because we love the scriptures. We love Covenant College because we love the gospel. We love Covenant College because we love the church. We love Covenant College because we love learning. We love studying and delighting in all the many aspects of God's creation and all the cultural manifestations that in his providence and goodness he has enabled us to explore. We love Covenant College because we love the people of Covenant College, the people we've come to love over these years. We love Covenant College because of its distinctive role in Christian higher education and because of the impact of alumni scattered all over the world. We love Covenant College. I love Covenant College because for the last 10 years, it's been my little C calling. For these same reasons, I will continue to love Covenant College in this next stage of God's purpose for the college and for me. What a blessing to be able to look forward with assurance because God is wonderfully blessing and God will wonderfully bless for his glory, for the good of his church, and for the blessing of the nations. Now, I'm delighted to invite, to offer our invocation, Professor Lance Wesher. Please pray with me. Almighty God, we have set this day aside to celebrate the academic accomplishments of these young men and women, to remember where they have been, to celebrate what they have done, and to see them off as they head to the places where you have next called them. But how could the pursuit of truth and wisdom be rightly celebrated if you were forgotten, O God, you who are truth and the source of all wisdom? How could our communion be rightly discussed if you were forgotten, O God, the vine into which we are all grafted? How could our joy be full if you were forgotten, O God, the source of all joy? How could our love be pure if you were forgotten, O God, the source of all love in heaven and on earth, who spared nothing but gave all in love? Almighty God, we approach you with great humility. We confess that we come entangled in our own sin and blinded by our self, the selfishness of our affections. But we know that you are not without witness wherever you are called upon, so we ask for your presence here, especially today. Be with us in this room. We invite you not only as an, as an observer of our celebration, but we acknowledge that you are the very source and object of our joy. Lord, in this celebration, in the ceremony of the event, may you be praised. In the words of our speaker, in the calling out of names, in the thoughts of our hearts, in the words that we share, in the time that we spend together, and in the memories that we keep, may you be glorified. We ask that the presence of your spirit might refresh us, giving us a foretaste of the heavenly communion where we will stand together in your glory, captured by your beauty and delighting in your presence. And Lord, as we send these men and women on their way, we know that the community that they shared these past years will not be physically gathered together again on this side of eternity. Remind us that our communion is found in the presence of your spirit, in the word of your gospel, and in the body of your church, and in the anticipation of the great hope we have for all eternity because of the accomplishments of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we ask this. Amen. Good afternoon. When I walked up to Founders Hall on move-in day with a slightly too large smile, my blue tartan backpack, and a zeal for everything that the thought of college life encompassed, I knew I'd learn a lot here at Covenant College. But in the past four years, 
I've grown beyond my expectations. You see, my entire life, I thought of myself as a stable, constant, optimistic, capable person. My freshman year at Covenant, those feelings were reinforced by my striving to be known and to excel. And I was known here, and I did excel. But sophomore year, I found that my initial self-appraisal was more than slightly flawed. For the longest time, I was baffled by why I couldn't just fix my own problems. In fact, I broke down when I realized that I just couldn't make it on my own. Yet in the face of grave disappointment and human failure, the Lord stood strong. And I began to see that although I'm never self-sufficient, I'm always secure because I am covered by the grace of God. Junior year, I learned what that grace meant as I grew to have more experience in life. There's been something wonderful about recounting the ways of the Lord in the past and embracing and enjoying the gifts of God where I am. In this final year at Covenant, I've been learning a lot about the fear of man in the depths of my heart. As I did, I began to identify the patterns of thinking that I had embraced since freshman year, which had for too long impacted my identity. This fear wasn't always an outright concern with what people thought of me or how I acted, what I wore, although for the record, I'm very glad to have this black robe because it gives off the scholarly air I was looking for. But in all honesty, it was sometimes much more subtle, um, a pride in my reputation or a pressure to do well in my ventures because it might reflect poorly on me if I don't. The Lord was kind during those times to remind me that his estimation of me was contained in the gospel. I'm continually being freed to live not for human opinion, but for God who has already declared his opinion of me, which is righteousness in Christ on my behalf. I've realized in the past four years that God has richly blessed me, kept me, made his face to shine upon me, and has been gracious to me. And I know that much of this is through the faculty, staff, and classmates that God has placed in my life since that August day in 2012. Eight. <laughs> Glory to him for all these things and more. Thanks. A long time ago, in a country far better known for tea and crumpets, I became a college dropout. My father had died, and I said to myself, it's all too much. So like Elijah, I went in search of a bush to hide under. The icing on the cake came when I was traveling in the US, and someone walked up to me and said, you speak really good English. How long have you been learning it? A few years later, my American-speaking wife asked me to pick up the pastor for dinner that night. Now, where I come from, the pastor is the guy who preaches at your church. The point is that culture change confused us, and our perspectives led to a very different understanding. So as we leave Covenant's culture, remember the perspective that Covenant taught us. Keep the faith service rather than power, generosity rather than riches, and Christ's glory rather than self-glory. In the world of work, Covenant's hope-filled Bible classes might fade to a Narnian dream, and reading Dilbert cartoons might become our morning devotion. When I'm in a cynical comic strip chaos, I believe in Narnia-like hope, keeping the perspective that bad situations are redeemable, God's order is rational, and Christian hopefulness always trumps the world's helplessness. I work for a big corporation and have found great success in applying what covenant has taught me. However it comes, C.S. Lewis talks about that success changing our perspective. Prosperity, Lewis writes, knits a man to the world. He feels that, his, his fi he, feels that he is finding his place in it when really it is finding his place in him. Not all of us will end up in a business office. We'll also go on to become great missionaries, doctors, musicians, teachers, and artists. No matter how long you live and prosper, the faith doesn't change. Our perspective, our perspective of it can. My experience is that seeing is a choice. When in doubt, know that believing comes before seeing. Think about Elijah. He was on the run, 
and ready to die under a bush in the wilderness. He too thought that he had had enough. The Lord told him to change his perspective. Go out onto the mountaintop. Wait for the presence of the Lord to pass. With his eyes, Elijah saw shattered rocks, earthquakes, and fires. Yet, he wasn't persuaded by this earthly performance. The presence of the Lord came in a still, small voice of calm. So, pastor chefs and pastors, kings and queens of Narnia, Elijahs and pointy-haired managers, when you climb to your mountaintops, when the earth trembles, wait and listen. Do you hear him? President Nielsen, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, fellow graduates, and family and friends. I'm honored to share today a small slice of my experience as a master's student here at Covenant. We are finishing three years that have newly taught me how joy-filled painful journeys can be and how pain-filled joyful ones can be. Of course, our academic work was both arduous and pleasurable. Readings, class sec sessions, papers, meeting new people and coming to count them as friends added delight that mixed with the pain of missing our families each summer. Even the stunning views that we enjoyed from campus were mingled with a sadness that beautiful places have to be left. We live in anticipation of a day when pure beauty and joy will be enjoyed with no farewells, but until then, our joys are mixed with pain. This jumble of pain and pleasure marks every season of life, but it seems to me that these intense three years of work covenant have reminded me anew that God's providence 
leads us to these amalgamated places. My covenant journey began with a 750 mile solo drive um, during which I was tempted at many points to turn around and go home. I could foresee only the difficulties ahead and I knew nothing of the joys that awaited for me. The rich new relationships, the conversations in and out of class, the intellectual challenge, the meals with professors and classmates. These are all memories that I now treasure. My covenant journey ends during a very painful time in my life, and yet the pain is still mixed with joys that are too numerous to count. The pain and the joy still mingle together, but the journey is better because it is shared. From the small joy of sharing with a postal worker in Pennsylvania that I was about to hand him my final project for my master's degree, to the great joy of sharing today's celebration with family and friends, I thank God that Covenant College is included in his journey for me. Thank you. Writing this speech, I wanted to capture the big ideas that have shaped me while I've been at Covenant. Ideas that are personally connected to the professors and friends who have encouraged me in conversation and by example to take the Lordship of Christ seriously. Late night talks, hard assignments, difficult questions. I'm so thankful. I've realized that those big ideas that I've learned these past four years all relate to a single question that I've been thinking about recently. What world do I see? My freshman year, I was required to read a biography of St. Francis of Assisi, a complicated yet compelling character. As a Christian mystic, the world St. Francis saw was poetic. Each tree and each bird was woven by God into the rich tapestry of his creation. Reading about and discussing Francis, I realized that I too wanted to see such a world a world where every particular thing is known, upheld, and worthy of honor because of the one who created it. But just as important is seeing that all of creation has been subjected to futility. Throughout my time at Covenant, it has consistently been reiterated that shalom has been lost. Our relationships with God, creation, ourselves, and others are broken. This poetic world we see is ravaged and ruined by sin, and all of creation groans for redemption. Tertullian, a church father we discussed in my Christology course, further helped me to see a world of redemption. He writes, remove the flesh and bring forward the one whom God redeemed. His point is clear. Jesus, our Lord, Savior, and God was embodied in flesh and blood as we are. God definitively declaring to all of creation that in Christ, not only will we as people with bodies be redeemed, but so will the entirety of creation. As I've learned, the world I ought to see is that in Christ, God is reconciling all things to himself, restoring shalom, and giving me the freedom to see the poetic world around me. That is the world I've learned to see, and I don't want to lose that vision. Thank you. William Graham Tullian Chavidjan is the senior pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A Florida native, Tullian is the grandson of Billy and Ruth Graham, a visiting professor of theology at Reformed Theological Seminary and a contributing editor to Leadership Journal. A graduate of Columbia International University with a major, as it should be, in philosophy and Reformed Theological Seminary in Orlando, the Master of Divinity, Tullian has offered a number of, of books, including Jesus Plus Nothing Equals Everything, published by Crossway. And his blog postings appear on his own website and on the Gospel Coalition website. He travels extensively, speaking at conferences throughout the US. His sermons are broadcast daily on the radio program Liberate. When he's not reading or studying or preaching or writing, Tullian enjoys being with people 
and especially relaxing with his wife, Kim, and their three children, Gabe, Nate, and Jenna. He loves the beach. He loves to exercise. And when he has time, he loves to surf. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Tullian Chavidjian. It's an honor to be here. It really is. My oldest son, Gabe, graduates next year, and we're trying to figure out now where he's going to go to college. So I'm checking you out, all right? Um, <clears throat> and uh, I love Covenant. Um, so it's just a, it's a real privilege and an honor to be here. Let me just start off. All of the student speeches were great. Is it Sophie? Where's Sophie? That was off the chain. It really was. You basically stole my thunder. Everything you said is what I'm going to say. Um, but that was so, so good. Thank you for saying what you said. The reason uh, I so deeply appreciated and my heart resonated with what she said is because as I was thinking about what to say here today, and I was going back through various graduation speeches that I've heard either by being part of graduation ceremonies or watching commencement speeches. I realized last night as I was going to sleep that so many graduation speeches are enslaving. That in one way, shape, or form, the speaker tells you that this is your time to do something big. That if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Now, they're trying to inspire you, but they tell you to do something remarkably radical, to go out and make something great of yourself, and without realizing it, they end up tying heavy burdens and placing them on the shoulders of people like you who are just too small to carry them. And all of this plays into our natural desire to save ourselves, to validate our existence, to prove our worth. Almost everything we do, whether you realize it or not, almost everything we do is an attempt, conscious or unconscious, to gain the approval that we long for. Approval from ourselves, approval from our friends, approval from our parents, approval from society, most damning even is to do these things to gain approval from God. So I'm, I'm here to give you an anti-graduation speech, okay, if that makes sense. And this is what I want to say. It's simple. You know, when they told me I had 15, 20 minutes, I can barely explain the pronunciation of my name in 15 to 20 minutes. So I was like, how in the world am I going to do this? And then it dawned on me that no one's here to hear me talk, okay? So that was both humbling and relieving, um, and that I remembered sitting in graduation ceremonies where the speaker went too long, and I thought, I wish he would just be quiet. Uh, so this is going to be, this is going to be short, and I've come to tell you one thing. You're free. The pressure is off. The gospel doxologically declares that because of Christ's finished work for you, you already have all of the justification, all of the approval, all of the security, all of the affection, all of the worth, all of the rescue that you long for and that we look for in a thousand things and people that are infinitely smaller than Jesus. It's yours. You have it. Jesus came to liberate us from the force of having to fix ourselves and find ourselves and free ourselves. He came to rescue us from the slavish need to be right and rewarded and regarded and respected. He, he came to relieve us of the burden that all of us inherently feel to get it done. Because Jesus came to secure for us what we could never secure for ourselves, life doesn't have to be a tireless effort to establish yourself, to justify yourself, 
to validate yourself. The gospel is so, so liberating. The gospel announces that it is not on me to ensure that the ultimate verdict on my life is pass and not fail. Now, you'll wrestle with this for the rest of your life. I don't care how good of an education you have received or how robustly trained you have been in the gospel. John Calvin said that we are all partly unbelievers until we die. And Luther said that we have to preach the gospel to ourselves every day because we forget it every day. And then he said, as a pastor, I have to preach the gospel to my people every week because they forget it every week. We will struggle with unbelief for the rest of our lives. Our hearts are idol-making factories, and that means that we will struggle for the rest of our lives depending on things and people, relationships, accomplishments, all of those things to be for us what only Jesus can be, to invest our lives with the worth that we long for, with the value that we long for, with the security that we long for, with the significance that we long for. And so this is good news for you, okay? Graduates and everybody else. Because Jesus was strong for you, you're free to be weak. Because Jesus was someone, you're free to be no one. Because Jesus was extraordinary, you're free to be ordinary. Because Jesus succeeded for you, you're free to fail. That's always the one that trips people up and they say, wait a second. You're giving people a license to fail. I said, no, I'm just acknowledging that we are failing. And thank God for Jesus because we are all, in one way, shape, or form, failing every minute of every single day. And that's why we can rest in the very fact that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, because Christ succeeded for us, when we fail, we have lost nothing in that regard. So because Jesus won for you, you're free to lose. This will ring true to your hearts when you get older, I promise. And I don't want to sound like an old man. I'm still young, 39. And, but I've learned over the years that, and have struggled over the years, believing with all of my might that because Jesus won for me, I'm free to lose. Let me tell you what happens. When you become free to lose, nothing Nothing in this world, nothing in this world can beat a person who is afraid to lose. It enables you to live a life of unbounded courage and sacrifice and generosity. Now some people, when I say these things, some people say, now wait a minute. Okay, doesn't this emphasis generate apathy? Doesn't it create sort of a lazy approach to life and I don't care posture toward life? I mean, if it's true after all that Jesus paid it all, that it is finished, that my value, my worth, my security, my freedom, my justification, and so on is forever fixed, then why do anything? Why do anything? Doesn't grace, in other words, undercut ambition? Doesn't the gospel weaken effort? Listen, gospel grace actually empowers risk-taking effort because if you analyze this carefully and you look at your own life, you realize that the thing that actually prevents us from taking big risks is the fear that if we don't succeed, we'll lose out on something that we need in order to be happy. And so we live our lives playing our cards close to the chest. I'm a pastor, and so I see this played out in relationships. Husbands and wives are afraid to give because they're afraid of being taken. They make investments in life, banking on the fact that there will be a return on that investment, and that return is something they need in order to feel validated in order to feel like they have some measure of worth and value. We're afraid to give because it might not work out and we need it to work out if we're going to be somebody, if we're going to matter. And so we 
manage the risks that we take. We keep our cards close to the chest. We only invest in something that will guarantee a return. But listen, because everything we need in Christ we already possess, we can take great risks, push harder, go farther, and leave it all on the field without any fear because the gospel alone tells you everything you need in Christ you have. Everything. This is embarrassing to admit, but um, there have been numerous occasions when I have misplaced my car keys, or so I thought, and I'm late for a meeting or I'm late for an appointment of some sort, and I will walk around the house barking at whoever's there, sure that someone misplaced my keys. So I look at, you know, Kim, my wife of 18 years, honey, did you, you misplaced my keys? I mean, you know, she's the kind of remarkably clean woman that if I put my cup on the kitchen table and go to the bathroom and come back, it's gone and it's in the sink. I'm like, where'd my cup go? She's like, since I'm like, honey, just leave it just for five minutes. Just leave it where it is for five minutes. So I'm sure that I can't find my keys because she put them somewhere. She assures me, no, I didn't put them anywhere. So then I bark at Jenna, I bark at Gabe, I bark at Nate, I bark at Thomas, our 400 pound shit zoo. I bark at the bird. I bark at Every, anybody and everybody who's in the house absolutely certain that someone misplaced my keys and I'm late. And then I go into my room. This is how, I promise you this has happened on two or three occasions. I will go into my room to look one more time, stick my hand in my pocket, and my keys are there. Okay. Now you laugh, and it's because it's funny. Um, I know you're laughing at me, and you're not laughing with me, and that's fine, okay, because everything I need in Christ I have, so I don't care what you think. Um, but we laugh at that, but the fact is that's the way many of us live our lives. We spend our lives frantically searching for something we already have, and God says in the gospel, the keys are in your pocket. Everything you need in Christ you have, and because that is true, we are liberated to live a life of scandalous generosity. Now I can give everything without needing anything in return. Gospel grace does not generate apathy. It actually empowers us to take big risks, knowing that if I get no return on this investment, I've lost nothing. Because my identity my worth, my value is not anchored in the assurance of getting a return on this investment, this life investment, this relational investment, this career investment. All of that is firmly secure in the person and work of Christ. So when you don't have anything to lose, you discover something wonderful. And that is that you're free. All of the approval, all of the acceptance, all of the affection that you long for and that all of us will spend the rest of our lives looking for in things and people smaller than Jesus, the gospel says you have it. It's yours. So if you're a Christian, you live your life under a banner that reads, it is finished. And that means that there is only one real, logical, provocative question you have left to ask yourself. And it's this. So what are you going to do now that you don't have to do anything? Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Shavidian. The candidates for degrees will now be presented by the Chief Academic Officer. 
Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Music, the Bachelor of Science degrees please stand? <laughs> President Nielsen, on behalf of the faculty of Covenant College, with noted exceptions, I present to you the candidates who have completed the requirements for the bachelor's degree. For your achievement, I offer you the hearty congratulations of the entire Covenant College community. Inasmuch as you have completed all of the requirements for graduation, by the authority of the Board of Trustees of Covenant College and the Board of Education of the State of Georgia, I confer upon you your bachelor's degrees with all the rights privileges and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please come forward. With a major in art, Stephen Brock Barber. Molly Tang Carson. Anna Ruth Davidson, cum laude. Todd Lawrence Fleming, cum laude. Timothy Elisha Goldsmith. Jacob Andrew Graham. Clara Alexandria Groney. Esther Annette Lloyd Hart. Stephanie Margaret Shanks, magna cum laude. Casey Cochran Snipes. Dinah May Steele. Amy Lee Trumbull, cum laude. With a major in Biblical and Theological Studies, Alicia Lynn Chatterton, summa cum laude. Samuel Johnson Dolby. Taylor Stanton Fletcher. Jacob Elliott Pyland, summa cum laude. Kevin Edward John Witten, magna cum laude. With a major in biology, Amanda Marie Kreider. <laughs> Joanna Mary Ganger, cum laude. <laughs> William West Gresham. <laughs> Jonathan David Herberick. Clark David Seeley, summa cum laude. Jordan Ann Stern. Emily Victoria Taylor Stewart. Donica Erin Weisheit. With a major in business, Brett Daniel Borland, cum laude. Colin Scott Dudley. John Regis Egger.
Chase Thomas Foster. Elizabeth Ann Harris, cum laude. Lauren Michelle Kirshner. Wesley Cole McDowell. Christopher Peter Meyer, cum laude. Tyler John Smith. <laughs> Timothy Dimitri Weir. <laughs> Katie Elizabeth Wise. <laughs> With a major in chemistry, Leah Hope Baugh. Joshua David Coleman, summa cum laude. Daniel Edward Heckman. Thomas Peter John Holcomb, magna cum laude. With a major in community development, Hannah Grace Brown, cum laude. Shane Richard Kinnett. Jeremy Paul Kroot, magna cum laude. Andrew Sterling Jones, cum laude. Kristen Elizabeth Lally. Scott Thomas McKeon, cum laude. Emily Rachel Reese, cum laude. Kelly Elizabeth Smallman. <laughs> Laura Peyton Vickery. <laughs> Evangeline Tiffany Wilkinson Watanabe. <laughs> Tara Elizabeth Woods. With a major in computer science, Adam Jeffrey Clayson, magna cum laude. Paul Robert McLean, cum laude. With a major in economics, Jonathan David Castleberry, cum laude. Calvin Anderson Chase. <laughs> Jacob Uriah Corbett. <laughs> Jared. Jared Frederick Lefebvre. <laughs> Peter Bryant McCrory, summa cum laude. Christopher Allen Musser, magna cum laude. Mitchell Randolph Prentice, cum laude. Daniel Mark Reenstra, cum laude. Stephanie Ann Sizemore. Hannah Ruth Sluice, magna cum laude. <laughs> Paul Andrew Workema. Yeah. 
With a major in elementary education, early childhood, Erica Renee Adams. <laughs> Hannah Claire Kraft. <laughs> Joanna Ruth Hartwell, cum laude. April Joy Hookstra, magna cum laude. Shana Elizabeth Hume. Da Som Chong. Christina Elise Kluko. Chelsea Brianne Kraft. Laura Rose Love, magna cum laude. Rebecca Marie Marbury. Helen Awino Matete Makian, cum laude. Mallory Elizabeth Phillips. Jill Ann Schlink. Emma Elizabeth St. John. Jessica Bailey Team. Brooke Lauren Wilbanks, magna cum laude. With a major in elementary education middle grades, America Divina Alvarez Hansen. John Adrian Jacobs. Micah Davidson Myers, magna cum laude. Sarah Alden Schaff, cum laude. Amy Jackson Werner. With a major in English. Lindsay Elise Burkholder, magna cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Chaco, magna cum laude. <laughs> Callie Jade Cleary, magna cum laude. <laughs> Christine Danielle Kaur. Carrie Connolly Coy. <laughs> Joseph Haddon Dodd. Virginia K. Elder, cum laude. Isaiah Paul English, cum laude. Sarah Ann Heinz Russell, magna cum laude. <laughs> Carolyn Elizabeth Reed. <laughs> Catherine Nicole Sass. Aaron Christopher Sherman. Ashley McLean Stafford, summa cum laude. <laughs> Natalie Suzanne Weber. <laughs> With a major.
major in French, Anna Josephine Wiersma, summa cum laude. With a major in history, Zachary Allen Causey. James Nathaniel Drexler. John, John Michael Hurty, cum laude. Daniel Paul Hume. Siler Thomas Johnston. Lynn Ariel Ogroski. Ryan Leonard Ostrowski. Matthew Thomas Quillian. Mary McGregor Roberts, summa cum laude. Benjamin Philip Scott, cum laude. With a major in interdisciplinary studies, Casey Ann Craft. Christopher Stephen DeReicher. Andre Maurice Glover. Jennifer Lynn Grider, cum laude. Jesse Elizabeth Jakes, cum laude. Dominique Jamal Magoy. Andrew Allen Minderman. Kaya Lindsay Moore. Jonathan John John Everett Spencer. <laughs> Erica K. Vaughan. Marcus Alexander Whitaker. With a major in mathematics, Mary Anastasia Barker, magna cum laude. Taylor Austin Jackson. With the major in music, Brandon Timothy Flynn, magna cum laude. Jedediah Daniel Jones. Elizabeth Anna Lawrenson, cum laude. Joseph Perrier Lloyd. With a major in natural science, Paul Andrew Musser, cum laude. Rachel Van Stelly. With a major in philosophy, Erin Rachel Helmley, summa cum laude. Zachary Simon Knuth. Adam James Christoponis, cum laude. Adam Victor Lutz.
Waverly Ann McMahon. <laughs> Philip Franklin Pugh, cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Baldwin. With a major in philosophy and religion, Ashley Elizabeth Baldwin, cum laude. Edward Dale Jamerson. With a major in physics, David Michael Myers, summa cum laude. Rosemary Annette Sheldon, cum laude. With a major in psychology, Benjamin Arthur Baldwin, magna cum laude. <laughs> Melanie Nicole Berg. <laughs> Jane Erin Brandon, cum laude. <laughs> Kristen Michelle Dahlstrand. Shelby Nicole Dingman. Kelsey Nicole Dupree, cum laude. Rashad Jaden Gober, cum laude. Jacob Taylor Guthrie. Dorothy Joan Kwan. Amy Michelle Rosenloff, magna cum laude. Lauren Spencer. Lauren Elise Spencer, Cum laude. Ross Thomas. Okay. Ross Philip Livingston Thomas. James Kenton Wood. With a major in sociology. Sophie Jane Beers, magna cum laude. Rebecca Bins Tuning Kirk. Samuel Joseph Eggertson. Caitlin Helen Helen Caitlin Glass. Tiffany Deneen Green, magna cum laude. Candice Nicole Hendon. Rachel Erin Nicole Jones. Sailor Lynn Culp. Courtney Elise Luckett, cum laude. Bonnie Evangeline McCoy. Anne Caitlin McNutt. Emily Morris. Emily Elizabeth Morris. Crystal Brooke Nesbitt. Ashley Ann Pierce. Mary Frances. Mary Frances Hunt Roberts, cum laude. Ashley. 
Ashton Day Scott, cum laude. Dana Nicole Streifert, magna cum laude. Kayla Grace Underwood. With a major in Spanish, Conrad Eric Bennett, summa cum laude. David Alexander Creech. Frederick Christian Graham Jr. Summa Cum Laude. Rebecca Maria Lacauzi. Holly Joy Schreiner, cum laude. With a Bachelor of Music degree in Applied Music, Jesse Ralph Cowell, Jr., magna cum laude. With a Bachelor of Science in Early Childhood Education, Amanda Jane Kaufman. <laughs> Kelly Elise Cardell with distinction. You, Linda Gail Godfrey. <laughs> Angela Ree Holcomb. Kelly Bethany Hooker with distinction. <laughs> Stephanie Lynn Hurst. Robin Marie Redman. Renee Lee Real with distinction. Elizabeth Spivey. With a major in organizational management, Melissa Ann Blevins. Todd Rudolph Bryant. Tracy Jean Bryant. Summa cum laude. Daniel Ivan Burns. Jerry Brian Corin. Edwina Yvonne Craig. Gregory A. Dixon. Daniel Carol Dupree. Nicole Denise Fields. Cassie Lee Freeman. Tina Lynn Garland, summa cum laude. Ian Christopher Goodman. Stephen B. Hurd, magna cum laude. Kenneth H. Heat. Deidre Prosser Kaufman, cum laude. Wayne Eugene King. Susan L. Lynch, magna cum laude.
Amber C. Medeiros. Regina K. Moore, magna cum laude. Sherry K. Pinion, summa cum laude. Kira Michelle Ritchie. David Marcus Vernon Rowe, summa cum laude. Zachary Dane Scott, cum laude. Daniel Ray Smith. John A. Smith. Patricia Diane Stevenson. Courtney Renee White. Nathan Chandler White, summa cum laude. Teresa Michelle Wilson, cum laude. The candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching with a specialization in educational studies. Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Teaching and the Master of Education degrees please stand? President Nielsen, the candidates before you have completed the requirements for the Master of Arts in Teaching and the Master of Education degrees. Before I read these words of congratulations, let me just say this is the first graduating class in our Master of Arts in Teaching program. We're delighted uh, to celebrate with you today. For your achievement, for your achievement, I offer the hearty congratulations of the entire Covenant College community. And by the authority of the Board of Trustees of Covenant College and the Board of Education of the State of Georgia, I confer upon you your master's degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please come forward. With a specialization in educational studies, Corbin Alex Brower. Lauren Jennings Hartzell. <laughs> Vincent Thomas Howard. Amy Diane Carter Powell. Chelsea Grace Gates Seeley. Celeste Arlene Sinclair.
Brandon Cleveland Snipes. Jeremy Craig Weber. With a specialization in educational leadership, Bryant Mays Black. Brian W. Gessling. <laughs> Abigail Doriani Karsten. Stephen Norfleet Steiner. With a specialization in integrated curriculum and instruction, Robin E. Burlew. Jennifer Beth Knott. <laughs> Judith Irene Miller. and Andrew James Novenson. Would you please join me in offering hearty congratulations to the Covenant College Class of 2012. Professor Dan McDougall. Professor Dan McDougall will now lead us in the prayer for the graduates. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our sovereign and eternal God, you are the one who knows the beginning and the end. 
And you are the one that we are not worthy to approach in and of ourselves. And yet you invited us to come to you on account of what the Lord Jesus has done. And you desire to interact with us as your people. Therefore, this day, our gracious God, we thank you and praise you for what you have done and what you continue to do with each of these graduates. We thank you for each one that you have brought here to Covenant College and for the privilege of faculty and staff to be able to work with these students and be challenged by these students. We thank you for the way you have worked in their lives and their hearts so that this day of graduation might come. Now, our gracious and loving Father, we pray that the work that you have begun you would also bring to full completion. We pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you will fill all these students with hope as they look toward the future. But we pray that that hope might not be in worldly success or the pleasures of this life, but that that hope would continuously focus on the resurrection from the dead and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will set all things right. We pray as well, our gracious God, that your spirit would fill them with a love, a love preeminently for you. But as a result of that love, a love for their brothers and sisters in Christ and for your church here on earth. And as well, that that love would reach out to all people so that they might do good to all. Finally, our gracious Father, we would ask by your Spirit that you would strengthen that faith that has been begun and that you would encourage that faith in the Lord Jesus and in his word each and every day. We ask our gracious God that you would give them more and more confidence in the promises of your word, which is certain and true. We again thank you and praise you, our God, for this joyous day and we look forward with eager expectation to see what you will accomplish through each of these graduates. Our gracious God, we offer all these prayers, not trusting in ourselves, but trusting in Jesus who died and rose again. And we pray in his name. Amen. Now I'm delighted to introduce the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Covenant College, Mr. Martin Moore. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and Trustees Advisors of Covenant College, let me be the first to warmly congratulate you on accomplishing a most important first step in your life. Also, to your family and friends who are assembled here to, to celebrate this day of accomplishment, I greet them as well and extend to them the greetings of the, from the Board of Trustees. I'd also like to take a chairman's privilege for just a one minute, again, acknowledge that this will be Dr. Nielsen's last commencement. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I just want to again con to uh, continue to give them our thanks for 10 years of wonderful service, and we'll miss them. As I mentioned earlier, too, that his, he's still on the payroll till July 1st, so we will uh, expect him to continue. <laughs> As representative of the Board of Trustees, I also represent our denomination, the Presbyterian Church in America, which Covenant College is an important part. And I'm pleased to report that the bonds of Covenant remain strong with the bonds of the PCA. They're strong and they continue to, to do so because the mission of the Presbyterian Church of America is inextricably linked to the mission of Covenant College. And the goals of the PCA are pretty simple. They're faithful to the scripture, they're true to their form faith, and they're obedient, and obedient to the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so these, in turn, line up very nicely with Covenant's mission, vision, and core beliefs, which can be so succinctly stated within a verse that you see when you turn into the driveway, a verse from Colossians 1.18, in all things Christ preeminent. So I commend you at a time of great transition in your life 
So today, you do begin another season of your life. It's end of one and the beginning of another, but it's the completion of one challenge and the beginning of another challenge. So therefore, we as a Board of Trustees not only commend you on your accomplishment, but also but we encourage you to continue your, to work out your faith beyond the walls of covenant. We urge you to continue to be faithful to Scripture, to continue to immerse yourself in the Word of God, to spend time in study, to meditate on God's Word, to continue your walk. I'm confident that the completion of your work at Covenant will not be a cessation of your faith, but an expansion of your faith. In the book of Jeremiah, God speaks with the Israelites at a time of great change, of upheaval, and he encourages them through his word. He encourages us that he has a plan for our lives, a plan to prosper, and, a plan, and certainly contained within that plan is a plan for fulfilling the Great Commission. I encourage you to actively and continually seek God, discern his will in your life, Covenant has this great saying, we offer biblically grounded men and women equipped to live out extraordinary callings in ordinary places. Extraordinary callings in ordinary places. So when you leave, as you leave today and you walk out to the sunshine, and hopefully your parents will be purchasing you a nice dinner tonight, know that God has a plan for you, a plan that may be in a foreign field, may be in positions of great responsibility, or maybe it'll be the mere ordinary. But whatever it is, it's going to be extraordinary. So again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the Presbyterian Church in America, I warmly congratulate you on a job well done, and I thank you, and may God bless each of you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we enter your presence with grateful hearts as we celebrate a milestone in the lives of these graduates and their families and friends. We praise you, Father, for your mercy, your power, and for your unfailing love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We acknowledge the many blessings you have given and are mindful of your intentional interventions in our lives. Thank you for the stern but compassionate ways you lead us into the paths of righteousness. You have been so good to us. At this time, I lift up these 2012 graduates to you, Lord, as they celebrate their accomplishments, mourn the upcoming separation from friends, and look forward to entering the next great adventure of being in your will. 
We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings these students have been to us as faculty and staff of Covenant College. Lord Jesus, as the graduates leave this joyous gathering today and go in scattered and diverse paths to explore their individual callings, I pray that you will guide them in this effort, protect them from being conformed to this world. Please give them an extraordinary passion for your word and a steadfast love for truth. Continue transforming them into your likeness through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray this prayer and expect our, express our love to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.